Yo, what's going on guys? Today, I just wanted to talk about how your CS resume should look when you're looking for an internship or an actual job in the industry. All of these tips I'm about to give you come from a Facebook recruiter and one of my buddies over at YouTube. He is a software engineer and he actually helped me build my resume that I have right now. All right, enough talk, let's get into it. All right, so guys, tip number one, which is probably the biggest tip, take notes. Tip number one would be have your resume on a single page and don't have it have flashy stuff. Honestly guys, you have about seven seconds to get the recruiter's attention, and if you have all this flashy stuff and it's on multiple pages, chances are, well. Chances are you're gonna get thrown out. So keep your resume on a single page, and don't have flashy stuff. Pick one color if you want it for subtitles or even headers, but honestly, black and white works great too. And with that single page, you wanna to try to fit all of your content in there and some tips to do that are maybe take away some of the margins, take away any extra white space. You wanna have as much on there as possible, obviously if it's relevant. And it's funny that I even have to say that because I'm sure some people would put some stuff on there that isn't relevant. All right, tip number two. Don't put any programming languages, frameworks, libraries, or anything else of the sorts on there that you're not super comfortable with and you're not comfortable enough to make a project with. Because if it's on your resume, chances are it's free game to test you on those subjects that you put on your resume. And you really don't want to put stuff that you have no idea because it's going to make you look like a liar. And it's going to make you look kind of dumb. And both of those scenarios we don't want. So just leave it off there if you're not super comfortable with it. It's totally okay if you only have one programming language on there. As long as you're really good at it and you know what you're doing, you're going to do fine. Don't worry about it. All right, guys. And tip number three is probably going to be the format layout of the resume. And what I mean by this is the sections that you actually have on your resume. So when I say sections, I mean education, any classes you've taken, programming languages, projects, hackathons, any awards, basically all of the sort, any experience. And if you don't have any experience, that's totally okay too. Facebook actually says, if you don't have any actual job experience, we are looking for other experiences such as open source contributions, hackathon projects, which I just mentioned, personal projects, class projects, any class stuff like programming clubs that you're in, anything of the sorts. They're also looking for those too. So really the main headings you wanna stick with if you had no prior job experience would be things like education, so the school you go to, or if, say if you've done things like Udemy, Udacity, if you aren't currently in a university or a college. And then you wanna put projects on there for sure. Projects are gonna be really big, and we're gonna dive deep into how you should actually lay out those projects in a second, but projects and maybe any open source contributions you actually added. And then other things you want to add on there is if you've taken any actual relevant computer science courses such as data structures and algorithms, anything of the sorts like that, those are good to put on your resume as well. Recruiters do look for those things. And off to the side, kind of the margin guys, you'd want to put those programming languages, those frameworks, libraries, any awards you've won at hackathons, any hackathons you've attended, things like that kind of secondary things on your resume, but those primary things are gonna, you're gonna wanna be more in the center of the page, you're gonna want a bigger font, and you're gonna want, if your recruiter, him or her, is looking at your resume, their eyes to go right to those things first, and your secondary things, obviously, second. All right, and tip number three, and this has to do with actually diving deep in how you should write your projects on there. And this is called the XYZ approach, and this actually comes from my friend over at YouTube. He says this is a really good way to actually put bullet points below your projects. So the XYZ approach is this. Architected with X to do Y, which resulted in Z. So that's kind of one of how you want to have those bullet points underneath your projects to explain what the project is. You want to use those words like architected, developed with, things of that nature. It sounds more professional and it kind of buffs your resume and those are easier to read and it just gets right to the point. It doesn't have that extra fluff that you want to write in there because recruiters don't care about that extra fluff. Don't try to you know, flash them, like I said, with extra words, buzzwords, you know, <laughs> algorithms, machine learning, data science, all those stupid buzzwords. Oh, wait, blockchain. Did someone say blockchain? Bitcoin? Stuff like that, guys, recruiters don't fall for. So honestly, don't even put that stuff on your resume. But the XYZ approach is really important for having underneath your projects in those subtitles explaining what the project actually is. All right, guys, and my fourth tip is don't pay for resume outlines and formats. There are so many places online that have you pay for these outlines, formats, make your own resume. Don't do that. The best way to do it is go to Google Docs 
and when you create click new it'll give you options of what type of document you want to make and there will be a resume document on there and there's tons of outlines and formats that you can actually pick and templates pick one of those templates something that's not too flashy something that's modern easy to read easy on the eyes and build from that don't build from scratch it's just going to be much easier to actually build from one of those things than actually using something from scratch or paying money for a resume template don't do that all right guys and the last tip and this is kind of a secondary tip but because we're saying keep your resume in one page you're not going to be able to fit all of your projects that you have so put your github or your personal website link somewhere on that resume so recruiters can actually find your other work and see what else you've done on the web that you couldn't fit on your resume it's a really good thing to add so like i said you can kind of buff it up a little and show more work and it's kind of like a two-page resume but it's not because it's just that single piece and recruiters if they're not interested in you won't even take their time looking at it which is fine but if they are they more than likely will actually go and take a look at your person more your personal projects things like that to actually get more of a feel for how you are as a developer but really guys making a resume isn't that tough i'm going to actually leave a link to a resume that i built for you guys as an example down below and you can take a look at that if you want but other than that really simple tips but all these tips did come from a facebook recruiter that i talked to and one of my buddies over at youtube i know when i first went to go create a resume i really didn't know what to do because most of the outlines online and on different websites weren't really for computer science and computer science is kind of a whole beast of its own compared to the rest of the resumes that you're going to see for like business any of that type of stuff but that basically wraps it up guys so if any of these tips did help you or you did enjoy this video please smash that like button and hit subscribe to never miss any more of my content or else I might get kind of mad. I'm just playing. Peace out, guys.